we are in chapter 7. Chapter 7, and one word, klipais. We learn that there are two levels of klipa, of shell. The word klipa means a shell. It's like a shell, like a coconut shell uh, from the coconut, or the peel of an orange. It's also a shell. The shell of an egg is also a shell. <laughs> and um, there is the shell that is the fourth klipa, klipas noiga. Noiga means that there's a ray of goodness there. Because the shell covers over what's inside. So it can be a very strong shell. Get back, we'll get into that in a moment. But the, the ones that's not so strong means that there's a ray of light that illuminates from it. There's some goodness. It's an admixture of good and, and evil. It is, so to speak, the middle ground between holy and completely something that's negative, negative force and evil. And it can go either way. It really depends on us, on how we use. So if kosher food can go either way, you could eat kosher food. Um, as Rava says in the Gemara, to um, eat meat, because the meat, he's, as he said, gave him... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the, it gave him strength, greater strength that he could study. The wine... Widened his mind, expensive, uh, expensive of mind, to allow the teachings to penetrate better. So that's taking that middle ground, and taking the ray of good that's here, there, and upgrading it, uplifting it. Right. Ultimately. Um, likewise, Rabbi would tell a joke before he would start teaching. Why? Not for, you know, that everybody should laugh and make them think, oh, look how smart I am or how good I am or how funny I am, because that would be self-serving. He did it in order to uplift the students so the students would be now more attentive to the teachings. That was his intent. Um, with the humor, humorous remark. What is that? So, klipas noiga, the middle ground, that which is permissible, like kosher food, for example, or speaking something that is humorous. See, humorous could be an upgrade or the opposite. Food can be an upgrade or the opposite. So when the intent is to serve God with it, then it's an upgrade and it's elevated. On the other hand, the al says that if we take the same food and we eat the meat in a gluttonous way and drink the wine in such a manner just to satisfy the bodily appetite of the animal's soul, then the negativity of that, remember Klippus Nega has an admixture. So instead of now taking the good that's there, you... Uh, are now being vitalized by the negative over there. And not only that, but it's actually degrading and absorbed temporarily in utter evil of the three unholy klipas. It's a complete downgrade now. So it's not now middle ground that can be used for an upgrade because now it's been used for a downgrade with the gluttonous eating. And what's more is now you become controlled by it. Instead of you being in control of the food, the food is in control of you. Right? We become a vehicle subservient temporarily because it's only in the moment that we're eating because we're eating something that is permissible. Permissible in Hebrew means mutar. Or we translate as mutar means permissible. But the word mutar means it's unattached, it's um, unbound, meaning it's unbound to extraneous forces, 
and it can be elevated. But that depends on our intent. If the intent is not, excuse me, to elevate it through using it in the service of God, so then we're downgrading, we're bringing it down. Now, since it is kosher, food, by the way of example, of kosher food, right? Then when you do tshuva, you can quickly bring back and elevate that food, that energy of the food in the drink, and it's released from the klipa, from the negative force, and it returns to a holy place, to a holy force. Why? Because, again, the meat or the wine or whatever it was that you engaged in was kosher. And since it's kosher, meaning it's mutar, permissible, the word mutar again means it's unbound. It's not it's not attached to extraneous forces that it cannot be upgraded, right? Now, and that's, again, what the word mutar meaning permissible, but really the root word is unattached, unbound, so it could be have an upgrade depending on us. Now, even though there's an upgrade afterwards when we do tshuva, all right, we, we ate something, um, you know, for our own pleasure rather than to serve God. Um, then we do tshuva, but yet because of the time that we ate it, there was a, a, a force, there was a vitality in that moment that was downgrade to klipa. To Klippa, um, that means even though we did Shuva later, but in that time period, there was a negative vitality, a negative force in my life. In my life. Um, Okay, I, I, I see that there's some issues over here. Um, folks, uh, let's not pay attention to anybody who is, um, is uh, you know, not coming from a good place. Okay. So, therefore, we need to be cleansed from that, ultimately. And this is what it means purgatory of the grave. Something we'll explain in the next chapter more. But it means a cleansing process, even though we did tshuva. But the tshuva helped from this point onwards, from the past, there's a negative. It's like a, imagine, you know, a nice clean white shirt. You got a little stain, a small stain, but it's still a stain. It needs to be cleansed even though you kind of cleansed it, but it didn't get away everything. It needs to be cleansed. Um, and God does a favor for us because through that cleansing, then that gives us an opportunity that, that we can then be able to have the pleasure of the divine. Because without that, you can't have the pleasure of the divine. Now we're talking about when the soul leaves this world. For a metaphor, a child plays in, in the mud outside. Mother brings, her, brings, a, uh, brings a child into the bath and it's hot water with a scrubby to scrub out and it hurts. It's painful. The mother's doing it out of love in order to cleanse because if you're not going to be clean, you know, you don't enjoy life the same way. So the same thing is over here. Being dirty, you can't have the good things of life, the illumination of the divine when you're dirty in the soul. So God cleanses. That's a favor for us, even though it may be painful um, as a result. Now, that's, we're talking about when it was eating something that was permissible and could be elevated, there's still some kind of cleansing to the soul. How about if you ate something that's forbidden? 
Or how about if he had relations that were forbidden relations, right? In other words, the vitality is not coming at that moment from Klippas Noiga, from this admixture of good and evil. This is complete evil. It's not kosher food for a Jew. It is a completely... It's a, the word sin over here is missing the point. It's not, oh, I did something sinful. I mean, yes, obviously. It's that the vitality you're getting that moment from that food or from that illicit relationship is coming from, Shalosh Klippas Atmeas, is coming from completely negative force. Completely a negative force. And it can't be elevated. Because it's Asur. Asur means prohibited, but it really means bound. It's tied. It's tied to extraneous forces, and it cannot be elevated. So what's going to be done? It means until a person passes away, then there's death is a cleansing process, and then it will be completely cleansed away. When? The times of Mashiach, when? All of negative forces of the world will be completely removed. Will be completely removed. But that will be in time to come. When this spirit of impurity will be removed from the world. Um, so it's either, you know, death is part of that, but ultimately it will be times of Mashiach. Or it can be now when the, when the person who did a sin does a repentance that is an enormous one out of great love that comes from the depth of the heart with such a great love towards God that you feel so bad for what you have done that you are like in a barren desert and so thirsty. It's the same thing here. So thirsty for God, to connect to God, that you feel that you're in a barren wilderness and you need this drink to give you life. This is the idea when someone does something sinful. That is, Sholish Galipa said to me, said the completely three unholy uh, forces that give, that give us vitality, that are uh, completely negative, not a ray of good in there like Klippas Neiga. And therefore, when a person repents out of this great love of this intensity, then it cleanses the soul completely cleanses the soul. And he even has the capability of cleansing the soul backwards, sort of, to when it happened. That's very powerful, but it's hard to reach there. But when a person does that, then our sages say that the penitent stands in a greater place than even the perfectly righteous individual. Why? Because the perfectly righteous serves God in a very orderly manner. The penitent in this way reached in such a deep place to find that spot where there is um, a, a, a find that deep spot within that a person comes closer now to God than they would have been without the sin. Without the sin. Now, to reach that place, not so easy, not so simple, and you know. Not necessarily something we're going to be able to do to be able to transform a sin into a virtue. Um, and if not, then, you know, death brings an atonement. And the times of Mashiach will bring the, time, the atonement ultimately or the cleansing. Atonement mean here cleansing um, ultimately. But yes, it can be done today, but again, a very deep. Uh, form of penitence. So, folks, question. I know now that this is our new format in learning. At the end of the class, I asked the question, I know now. I, so I can't look at somebody else, I can't depend on somebody else because I need to know because learning Torah, I, I have to have an, an, a, not just the idea, but I have to have a knowledge, I have to have a connection. It has to touch me. Now, now and what I learned, not what I learned yesterday or I learned another time, but today what I learn. What do I know today? 
So I ask you folks, if you can share with me, what do you know now in the unique teachings of Tanya from today? Share with me, please. Richard is asking, how do I cleanse my soul enough to have a meaningful dialogue? Mashiach is taking too long. Yeah, Mashiach is definitely taking too long. How can you cleanse? So folks, I, I don't know, you know, we just we just have to dig deeper all the time and and try to, you know, things that we did to but we can always dig deeper for even more. Um, but don't get caught up in this and don't get uh, feeling, I, I didn't do enough tshuva, I'm not good, I'm not da 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 No, this, you know, that's very, it's only um, self-perpetuating, self-directed. Don't go that way. Just try to own whatever you can and um, take full ownership and, and do tshuva and move forward. Don't get stuck. We all need an upgrade, but we shouldn't get stuck on, on, on this upgrade, okay? Very, very important. Because this, if we're not in a healthy place in doing tshuva, we could be in a great downer as a result of what we just learned over here. And that's definitely not what the Alter Rebbe wants, or I want. <laughs> Is the soul cleanse um, for the entire 11 months? Yes, a, a soul takes might take up to 11 months for the soul to have its complete cleansing. That's why we say Kaddish for 11 months and not more. Yes. Can uh, getting a divorce be a cleansing? Everything can be a cleansing. If you if there's pain, if there's pain in it, then there is cleansing. If you recognize that that pain is coming from God and it's meant to be cleansing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we got over here. What um Free mad. That's a good question. Let me think about it. Okay. Okay, Bacha, I know now that a sin has been committed that is coming from the Klippa Sanga doing Chuva. A deep sense of penitence has uh, uh, has to cause change. The person can stand in the place above the tzaddik in that moment. Very good, thank you. John, the Klippas Noiga, while neutral, allows us to elevate the good found within, in everything to Kedusha. Excellent, John, thank you. Uh, David, I know now that I need to have the right intention, the godly intention when I eat, to elevate the food, so I should learn better. Excellent, very good, David. Hannah, I know now that the truly penitent st person stands in a greater place than the righteous because he has reached a deep spot from within and becomes closer to God. Excellent, Hannah. Wow, you guys are great. <laughs> Amazing. Malka, I know now that mitzvahs we do every day can still be elevated, uh, can still be elevated more, but why we do more by why we do them. Yes, excellent. Okay, reconnected. Eugenia. I know now that permissible things give vitality from Kalibus Noiga, and it is our proper intent that helps to elevate them. Excellent. Wow. Linda, I know now that when I do something sinful, chas v'shom, God forbid, the vitality is coming from completely negative forces and can't be elevated. Well, you're right. In that moment, it can't be elevated. But through tshuva, as we explained, this is the next I know. I know now that if I did something so that was uh, completely sinful, that and is not, uh, that is completely um, prohibited, that's bound to extraneous forces, that I can transform it through the depth of love of God because of the thirst that it created in me because of the distance that I have, that I feel that distance through that sin. And it brings me, you know, that great distance brings me closer. So yes, thank you, excellent. Simcha, 
We all come closer to Hashem when we reach out, reach our righteousness within ourselves by thinking out loud. Okay, thank you. Lana. Sin comes from when I am not seeking God's Torah. True. God is the most compassionate, uh, Layla. I don't know if I pronounced that right. And forgiving. He forgives all sins. Yes. Um, right. We, we didn't speak about the forgiveness here aspect, which is in the third part of Tanya, by the way, and it's very true what you're saying. Um, I mean, you need to ask for forgiveness to get forgiveness, right? Um, but the point over here is about us on this on our part. I know now that Arena says that doing mitzvahs to the deepest part can be elevated to such a great level. Well, we really didn't speak, Rina, it's true what you said, absolutely, but that's not what you know from today because doing mitzvahs is not what we spoke about today. We told, spoke about today doing things that are in a permissible ground or prohibited ground, right? Not mitzvahs, those are holy things. We spoke about things that are uh, that are klipa, two types of klipa, klipa's noiga, that has a mixture of good and evil, it's the middle ground, and that based on our intent will elevate it or be a downgrade. And if it's completely prohibited, then, um, you know, it's, uh, we can't elevate it unless we do a complete juva or when Mashiach will come and all evil will be removed from the world. Okay. Yes, Chris, very true. Thank you. All right, folks, amazing. A reminder tonight, 6.30, I'm going to be giving a class, a Parsha class. And also for Ringin, for Hey Tapis. It's going to be on Zoom and on Chabad ZK, Chabad Zichring Facebook page. Um, so do come and join. We're going to Fabring for Hey Tavis. It is Hey Tavis today, as we mentioned earlier. And um, we need to Fabring. So I'm looking forward. Oh, Batya, could you put that up again and um, uh, about being on the video? Rina, thank you for taking that. Well, wow. <laughs> uh, Batya, you put up that you wanted to be on the video and I want to put you up so you could share. Okay, it came up and then I lost it. I want to try again. It said there, I want to... How did you do that? You hear me, Bacha? Okay, I'm holding. Brief moment. So we got a, a bunch of I know now. And you guys are, are actually catching on to this in an amazing way um, in uh, sharing that which you know, which is, um, of course, very important. You sent. Okay. And I don't see. Uh, Hannah, if you send a private message me your email, we'll get you all the info. All right, doesn't seem to be working. All right, folks, a good tovah, shavua tov, a good yantiv, good hey tevis. We'll bring later more, so please come and join. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Yeah, maybe. Okay, thank you. Have a wonderful day.